the argument runs like this. First, all truth claims, also all claims that given a proposition, that a given proposition is true or false or indeterminate or undecidable, or that an argument is valid and complete or not, are raised and justified and decided upon in the course of an argumentation. Second, that the truth of this proposition cannot be disputed without falling into a contradiction, because any attempt to do so would itself have to be come in the form of an argument, hence the a priori of argumentation. Third, argumentation is not free-floating sounds, but a human action, namely a purposeful human activity employing physical means, at least a person's body and various external things, in order to reach a specific end or goal, namely the attainment of agreement concerning the truth value of a given proposition or argument. Fourth, that while motivated by some initial disagreement or dispute or conflict concerning the validity of some truth claim, every argumentation between a proponent and an opponent is itself a conflict-free, a mutually agreed upon and peaceful form of interaction aimed at resolving the initial disagreement and reaching some mutually agreed on answer as to the truth value of a given proposition or argument. Fifth, that the truth or validity of the norms or rules of action that make argumentation between a proponent and an opponent at all possible, that is, the praxeological presuppositions of argumentation cannot be argumentatively disputed without falling into a pragmatic or performative contradiction. Six, that the praxeological presuppositions of argumentation then, that is, what makes argumentation as a specific form of truth-seeking activity possible, are twofold. First, each person must be entitled to exclusive control or ownership of his own physical body, the very means that he and only he can control directly at will, so as to be able to act independently of one another and come to a conclusion on his own, that is, autonomously. And second, for the same reason of mutually independent standing and autonomy, both proponent and opponent must be entitled to their respective prior possessions, that is, the exclusive control of all other external means of action appropriated indirectly by them prior to and independent of one another and prior to the onset of their argumentation. And seven, that any argument to the contrary, that either the proponent or the opponent is not entitled to the exclusive ownership of his body and all prior possessions cannot be defended without falling into a pragmatic or performative contradiction. Because by engaging in argumentation, both proponent and opponent demonstrate that they seek a peaceful, conflict-free resolution to whatever disagreement gave rise to their arguments. Yet to deny one person the right to self-ownership and his prior positions is to deny his autonomy and his autonomous standing in a trial of arguments. It affirms instead dependency and conflict, that is heteronomy, rather than conflict-free and autonomously reached agreement and is therefore contrary to the very purpose of argumentation.